Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, back again with another DJI Phantom 4 video. Now unfortunately, and this is true for Phantom 1 through present, which is Phantom 4, there are some troubleshooting challenges. So if you're the impatient type of person, drones may not be for you. But with that said, what I want to explain is that I did encounter, unfortunately, I did encounter a tilted horizon issue with my Phantom 4. So what I'm going to do within this video is show you how to perform a calibration that may eliminate that tilted horizon issue if you've encountered it as well. Keep in mind, prior to my first flight, I did not do this. I went in with the expectation that, you know, hey, everything's going to work okay. I don't need to perform this calibration like I did for my Phantom 3 Pro. Without further ado, let's get it out of the case here and uh, let's go through it. So for the calibration, I don't have to have, I don't need to have the propeller zone. That's, that's of no use. What you do want to be aware of if, if you're near, uh, if you're near metallic objects or anything that could interfere, like a vehicle or something along those lines, power lines, etc. You want to try to get rid of that. You want to try to get away from that because you don't want to have, you don't want to have any potential interference. Uh, what I'm going to do now, again, without propeller zone, because I'm not flying yet, I'm just, I'm getting everything calibrated. I took my camera guard off. Never want to power it on with that on. That's only there for transportation to better ensure that it likely won't become damaged when you're going from point A to point B. There's no metal. That's purely plastic. I don't have anything that I feel would interfere with the... Uh, with the calibration unless there's some sort of uh, subterranean uh, UFO base, USO or whatever you want to call it, down below that would create interference, but I don't think that's the situation here. Uh, so I'm going to go into my app. Again, I'm using the iPod Touch. Whatever device you may be using is fine, but this is what I use for, for my Phantom 4, and I found that it works well. Very small, very easy to see, even without a sunshade because of the display, which is great. My little short iOS cable. Look at that, how clean that is. And you can find all of this, including the Phantom 4. Check the link within this video's description and you can find it all there. Uh, so I'm going into DJI Go app. And it's probably not a good idea that I have a cell phone in my hand because that could potentially create interference. Okay, I didn't sync up. I'm going to power off and back on here. Sometimes you may encounter that with the Phantom. This has been present Phantom 1 through through current. Is that sometimes you have to power cycle your, and that's what I had to do, power cycle my controller, and now I've got the view. Uh, so I'm in my DJI Go app, and what I'm going to do, and I'm going to step you through this so that ideally what you want to be staring at is a camera view in your DJI Go app. And up at the top where it says safe to fly GPS or it may see something else, you're going to want to click that area. And then you're going to want to go to, you'll see it, and it's probably the third option, th uh, fourth option down. It says compass. And it says there's an option beside it that says calibrate. Uh, so what we want to do, it says please start, press start to begin compass calibration. Okay, it says rotate, rotate aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. Now vertically, and I'm facing the camera down to the ground when I'm doing this step. Some people have argued that it needs to be clockwise or counterclockwise. I've heard people say that it doesn't matter, and I can personally tell you that I've, I've gone both clockwise and counterclockwise, and for me, the calibration step, I didn't encounter any issues when I, when I did it one way or the other. Now, that's just the compass calibration, because what you're going to want to do next is the more advanced calibration, which is called the IMU calibration. Okay, so here's how you're going to get to it. In the middle top where it says safe to fly GPS, or it may not say safe to fly, but it mentions GPS, directly to the right of it, it looks like a little controller icon. Click that little controller icon. Then at the very top, there's, a, there's an icon that looks like a quadcopter. Click the thing that looks like a quadcopter. Scroll down. That's the section that says MC settings. 
scroll down to where it says advanced settings. Once you're in advanced settings, scroll down to where it says sensors, S-E-N-S-O-R-S. -S. Once you've selected sensors, then at the very bottom, it says calibrate IMU. So again, make sure you're away from any potential interference, metallic objects, vehicles, whatever, power lines. Click calibrate IMU. Then it'll say, please do not move the aircraft. The process will take about five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna do start calibration. I'm gonna hit okay. And it's giving me a percentage here. So on 2%, 3%, I found a lot of times that, and it's probably not a good idea for me to use my cell phone during this calibration, but I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. Again, not, not recommended because it could potentially create interference. But that's over there doing its thing. And it's gonna give you a percentage until completion within the app. So, you know, just let it run through. Again, flat surface. What I found preferably a cooler environment uh, if you're, you know, maybe let your drone cool down and then and, um, and take it out before doing this. Some people say it's better to do it when it's warm. Some people say it's better to do it when it's really cold. I've just found that kind of cool is the best. So what we're going to do as soon as this uh, as soon as this completes is that we're going to you can check out my other videos to see if I've still got tilted horizon because it's my expectation that performing this calibration, again, this was compass calibration, not only the compass calibration, but also the IMU calibration, which is a more advanced calibration. And hopefully this will resolve all of the tilted horizon issues and we'll be able to have silky smooth flying action from the, uh, uh, from the Phantom 4. So check out all of my Phantom 4 tutorials, not just Phantom 4, but Phantom 3 Professional, Phantom 2, Phantom 2 Vision Plus, Phantom 1. Find it all. Check the link within this video's description. I've got a, uh, a tutorial section just chock full of tutorial content because that's, that's what I'm all about. You know, I expect these problems. I mean, granted, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have troubleshooting challenges, uh, but this is just part of it. We're, we're early adopters of the, uh, of the UAV technologies, and as I've stated over and over, you know, we're still, a uh, good comparison is the cell phone. Remember getting a cell phone, you used to have a bag you had to carry around that big bag. You had poor service, and the and the rates were super high to have a cell phone. Well, that's where we are still with the, with the UAVs. I mean, we're in the infancy of UAV technology. So be sure to uh, you know be patient. Expect these troubleshooting challenges. Anytime you run into a troubleshooting challenge, check out my website 400orbelow.com. If it's not there now, I'll probably run into it, and I'll probably post a video soon. You know, follow me on Facebook. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Pinterest, Twitter. It's all Irix guy. That's my screen name on all those sites. We're at 90% right now. Uh, 92. I'm gonna let this calibrate. And something really cool. Check out my video. I did a uh, I did an active track test using a truck, and it was less than perfect performance in my opinion. It it tracked it some some part of the time, and then it didn't. But it was chasing me around the field. It did fine. So what I'm gonna do today, a separate video. This is the IMU calibration video, but I'm going to. Uh, chase a bicycle through a field so we're going to see how well the visual uh, object tracking works for that 95% uh, on the IMU calibration it's nice it gives you a percentage the uh, some of the earlier versions of, of DJI app and obviously this was formerly known as DJI pilot now it's DJI go app but in the past they didn't provide as many visual cues as to where you are from a progress perspective so they've They've greatly improved that. 97, 98, 99, success, success. It says success, success, and it's in green. Calibration complete. Well, let's see, it says success, but it hasn't really said to restart. Actually, on the bottom it does. It says calibration complete restart the aircraft but just out of good practice i don't like the way within the app that start calibration is kind of a bold font and then the calibration complete restart aircraft is kind of grayed out it makes me a little bit nervous obviously this is not a firmware update but anytime you perform a firmware update if it's interrupted prematurely it can create problems so i'm going to wait just a moment here make sure this is indeed uh, ready for a restart and then we're going to restart the aircraft and hopefully everything with tilted horizon will be resolved
Okay, it looks like everything uh, successfully calibrated. Obviously, I did just to recap the uh, did the IMU calibration, which is you know it didn't take as long as they anticipated, and that's usually the case I found with DJI updates and and um, calibrations is that they make you think it may take longer than it actually does. But that's it. Again, check the link within this video description. You can find where to order the Phantom 4, the Phantom 3 Pro, Phantom 3 Advanced, Phantom 3 Standard, uh, Phantom 3 4K, the older Phantom 2 models. It's all there. And then also the Typhoon H, which is a competitor of the DJI Phantom, to be tested. I've got it on pre-order from 400orbelow.com. It'll be interesting to see how it compares with the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 3 Professional. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to youtube.com forward slash irixguy. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm an independent channel, and it's viewers like you 
that help me to continue to grow. I appreciate your viewership, and y'all have a good day.